wanted Wish to be good. I desperately wanted Wish to be good. I wanted to prove everyone wrong that Disney still has it and can make a wonderful movie for their 100-year anniversary, but it bombed due to corporate checklist writing and fear of risk-taking. And I've seen time and time again a lot of people wanting this movie to be remade and or wishing that it was better, no pun intended. So I'm going to take a crack at rewriting it, and not only will I rewrite the plot, but I will rewrite it in a way that Disney intended. This means making merchandisable characters, emphasizing girl power, and referencing all the animated movies made by Walt Disney Studios, and I mean all of them, except for maybe the World War II ones. This is to pay homage to all of the aspects of Walt Disney Animated Studios, not just its very first film. And only the ones from Walt Disney Animation Studios, not Pixar or anything. Let's see how I do. Spoiler alert, it's going to involve death, all the Disney animation references, and everyone's favorite, Star Boy. We start with the father singing When You Wish Upon a Star, and we actually see Asha's father interacting with her rather than just a picture of the two. We see her father explaining to a young Asha about stars and how everyone is made of stardust, and how if you wish upon a star, your dream will come true. Here we see that moment of bonding between Asha and her father at the tree. Maybe we'll have her father sing When You Wish Upon a Star or A Dream is a Wish as he tucks her in. After Asha's asleep, we see him coughing and looking disappointed as his wife comes to comfort him. They don't say anything. The look says everything. Asha's father knows that his health is taking a turn for the worst. Asha's father then looks to the sky, looks at a star, and looks hesitantly. And cut to now when Asha worked for the king as a tour guide and cue intro song. During the intro song, we see a few other Disney Easter eggs, like the town as a church that looks like Notre Dame, and the castle that looks like something from an obscure Disney movie like Sword in the Stone. We have a couple of villagers that are dressed like the kid from The Reluctant Dragon and Johnny Appleseed. And we have like a black lamb running around, like from So Dear to My Heart. During the song, a big guy dressed like Wreck-It Ralph is working on construction because I don't know how else I would have referenced him in this movie. The intro song is mostly the same, but with a few lore changes. When people turn 18, they meet King Magnifico and still give him their wishes. But telling the wish means it won't come true, because Cinderella reference. This also removes one of the huge plot holes in the movie. We're also getting rid of King Magnifico's tragic backstory. He's just a powerful wizard that built Rosas because he wanted his own kingdom and promised everyone that fought for him that they would have their wishes granted, which he did at first, and then the kingdom grew bigger and bigger and he got different ideas. After the successful conversion of people to moving to Rosas, Asha joins her friends in the kingdom's kitchen. And we're gonna like cut half of her friends, only these three matter now and they are dressed like Mickey, Donald, and Goofy, kind of just for original homage references. Zima and Dahlia are arguing over what color to make the cake for the next wish-granting ceremony. They're arguing whether or not it should be pink or blue. Asha arrives and everyone starts to help her prepare for her interview tomorrow. We see Simon depressed and he mentions how he wish he remembered his wish, and how since he gave up his wish he feels kind of hollow. We also get information on Bazima, whose family is rather high up, wealthy, and close to the king. She's grown up with pretty much everything that she's ever wanted. So she talks to Simon and says that she's never really had a wish because she can never think of what to wish for that her father can't ever get her. Bazima just works at the kitchen because that's her passion. Bazima says it's not like she's always constantly happy because she has money. She still says she feels like something is missing, but she doesn't know what yet. Asha's friends then start prepping her from the interview by asking basic interview questions and Asha gives them a strict and straight-laced response. We see that she has rehearsed this several different times over, but she is nevertheless still worried about the interview. Asha is less of a lol I'm so quirky XD kind of person and more of a straight-laced, absolutely dedicated to what she wants kind of person, but we can see that she's a little bit messy. We cut back to the town, and there is distrust in the crowd about their wishes not being granted. The king then gaslights everyone in a beautiful song, and uses his magic to placate everyone, and everyone calms down. Magnifico then goes inside the castle, and here we see him upset, calling everyone ungrateful, and that he needs a bit more of a magic boost. Then his wife comes in and does something sweet for him, like get him some lemonade, and we see how much the two really love each other. 
Asha then goes home and talks to her mother and grandfather. She talks about how she convinced a few more people to move to Rosas today, and she says she hopes she might get promoted, if not getting this job tomorrow. Her mother says that's good, as the family business has been a little bit slow. The family business is also another Disney reference. This makes us really feel the absence of her father and the pressure on Asha to do well at the interview tomorrow. Her mother then mentions that tomorrow there's a wish-granting ceremony, and then we get the same scene of like, oh, Grandpa, it's your 100th birthday tomorrow, it can't be a coincidence. Same scene as the original. They then talk about if she's nervous for her interview tomorrow, and Asha mentions how she wants this position more than anything, not just to grant her grandfather's wish, but because she has a passion for magic and is passionate about the premise of Rosas granting wishes. After dinner, she goes to her room. We see that her room is messy and that Asha is a busy and messy person. It's not absolute chaos, but it's still a little messy. Asha's room will be full of more obscure Disney references, like movies like Bedknobs and Broomsticks, Fun and Fancy Free. It will give her a Big Hero 6 plushie that kind of looks like a rag doll or a dinosaur plushie. Whatever is left will go into Asha's home in book or cool item form. That night, Asha sees a star in the sky and remembers what her father told her. She's about to wish on the star for the Sorcerer's Apprentice position, but then we see her stop and reflect for a moment. She then instead wishes on the star to help grant her grandfather's wish at any cost. Maybe we get the This Wish song here, but better written. We also see the big golden flash like in the original, and the same scenes of everyone in the kingdom reacting to it and King Magnifico going, What? I feel a disturbance in the force. She then blows out the candle at her bedside and goes to sleep. While Asha is asleep, the star comes down from the sky, still in marketing form for now. The star sees Asha asleep and sprinkles some stardust on her, which makes her immune to the king's magic, as we will see later. The star then starts to look around her room and looking at all the references and then starts messing with everything. The next morning, Asha wakes up and realizes her room is absolutely trashed. She then looks at her cuckoo clock on the wall and realizes, ah, I don't have time for this today, and sees that she's running a little bit late. She gives a quick happy birthday kiss to her grandfather before hurrying into town. We see some people talking in town about the glow they saw last night. One of them in a bowler hat says that they thought the sky was falling, and another argues and says, no, it was clearly aliens. Asha then barrels through both of them and apologizes several times, but she makes it to the castle right in the nick of time. The queen welcomes her in right as she gets to the door, and we get a sense of familiarity like they've met maybe once or twice before in the past. She says that King Magnifico will be there in a second, and Asha is politely waiting, lightly nervously, for the king to arrive. Cut to Magnifico, who quickly calms somebody who's asking when their wish is going to be granted by manipulating him with magic again, before going inside to meet Asha. Now, in this movie, Magnifico already knows Asha because she works for the kingdom and is amazing at advertising Rosas and getting more people and their wishes to join. The king is happy to see her again. She says, thank you, your majesty. The king tells her she's amazing at her job and Asha is just soaking in the praise and forgetting all the doubts she previously had because Senpai is praising her. Magnifico is sickeningly sweet to her the whole time because she's been a loyal palace worker and has recruited so many people in their wishes to the kingdom. No forbidden book, we don't need it. Magnifico is already evil. Also, maybe we'll have him dressed in black and purple to pay homage to other Disney villains. Maybe we'll give him a black line of fur around his coat to kind of look like Scar. Magnifico then starts the interview, asking a couple of interview questions, and she responds with the rehearsed, short, swift, and to-the-point answers like she's done this a thousand times. Magnifico nods along with her answers, and then he asks the question, why do you want to be my apprentice? Asha starts with her planned short and swift answer, but then she goes off and starts to speak from the heart. We hear her tell Magnifico about her passion for magic and her love for Rosas and its ability to grant people's wishes, and she talks about her great admiration for Magnifico, and she talks about how she would love to follow in his footsteps. This makes Magnifico very happy. He believes Asha is a loyal and passionate follower, so he says that he will do something he doesn't do to many people. He will show her the wishes. He tells her this and Asha feels very special. So he takes Asha to see the wishes and a lot of these wishes reference other movies in Disney. Asha notices there are a lot less wishes than there probably should be, but the king gaslights her and she dismisses it. Then Asha starts asking about how the wishes work. Magnifico explains the vetting process and how he decides what wishes are worth granting. 
Magnifico will also make reference to the wishes that he can't grant, and it's the exact same three exceptions as seen in Aladdin. Asha then starts questioning Thing, and the biggest thing that pisses Magnifico off is, why do you keep them if you don't grant them? Magnifico gives her magic persuasion, but that doesn't work because star magic, which freaks him out, but he can't tell her that's the reason because no one knows he's using magic to placate the kingdom. He just gets super mad at her for questioning him and then returns to being fake sweet and then invites Asha to sit with him and the queen at the next wish granting ceremony that night. Asha's a little bit uneasy about how the interview went, but feels like things went pretty well. The wish granting ceremony that night is pretty much the same and someone who wishes to be strong gets their Hercules reference and then Magnifico tells her that she did not get the position in a sickly sweet HR email prompt. You know, like the unfortunately we cannot offer you a position at this time kind of deal. He also demotes her from her current position. She's heartbroken and starts blaming herself. When she gets home, Asha talks to her grandfather about what she saw and of course he is naturally upset because he expected his wish to be granted today. Her grandfather then says the king knows what he's doing and they get in a small argument. It then comes out that Asha got demoted today and her family is devastated because this is a major dent in their income and her mother chastises her about getting on the king's bad side. Her grandfather then says that she could always do the family business with her mother, but Asha, in tears, goes to her room, and she takes her dinner with her. Maybe we get a small song about her being sad and that her hopes are crushed. Depends how much time is left in the movie. Asha closes the door behind her and weeps, throwing her magic books against the wall in frustration. The star sees her upset and grabs a tissue for her. She accepts, but then sees the star and freaks out and hits it with the broom, and then we finally get Starboy like everyone has been wanting. She asks what he is, and he says he's a star here to grant her wish. Asha begins asking more questions, but the star seems to be very attention deficit and is distracted by the food Asha brought to her room, using the fork to run through his hair, kind of looking at the food, and and then he sees the goat, and he sprinkles the stardust on the goat, we get the talking goat, but he is voiced by someone who is actually funny. There, there's your marketable Disney animal sidekick, you happy Disney? Asha then is like, hey! Pay attention to me! I want my questions answered! She asks a bunch more questions, and one of them she asks is, how is this possible? And then she answers her own question by recalling what her father said to her about wishing on stars. And Starboy's like, hey, how did you know that? And she explains that her father told her and mentions her father's name. Starboy says the name sounds familiar. He says that he had a wish, but he can't tell it because the laws of the universe says it he does, it won't come true. Indicating that the wish has not come true yet. Asha says she still has a lot of questions and that she can't believe this is happening. She even asks about some of the wishes that Starboy has granted in the past. In response, Starboy sprinkles some stardust on them, and she and maybe the goat also start flying and go on a kind of magic carpet ride-esque-like journey. And here is where At All Cost is sung. During this musical number, Starboy is showing little starry images and bright yellow silhouettes of the wishes he granted in the past, and all of them are Disney references. We see a silhouette of Snow White and her prince. We see a silhouette of Mary Poppins. We see a silhouette of Tiana's restaurant, Rapunzel and her wish for freedom, Mulan saving her father, Moana saving her island. Basically a montage of all the Disney characters that had their dreams come true or wished upon a star. He sings about how he wants to protect his wishes before Asha joins in and sings about how she wants to protect them as well. And Starboy's ability to do that and then they sing about how they want to protect each other. They do the Tarzan hand touch thing, and we can see how much they really bond during the song. Asha is absolutely mesmerized by all the wishes that Starboy has granted in the past. The two end the song in the forest. Meanwhile, Magnifico is going crazy over how Asha was able to resist his magic and is wondering if it had anything to do with the light in the sky last night. Here we learn that the king is feeding on the wishes that aren't safe, in his opinion, to keep his powers. While he claims he can only grant a certain amount of wishes per month, he can clearly do more. He just has a lot of vetting to do. His wife comes in and is like, Oh, sweetie, it's just one girl. Don't worry about it. Here, have a fresca. And then they start singing an evil song that later becomes a dastardly duet version of At All Cost. It's in a different key and they're singing about how they love to crush their enemies and how their ambition and their cutthroat ruthlessness is what brought them together. 
basically a twisted version of the song that we just heard. Also with more upbeat rock tones. During the song, they pull a lever and go down to a basement where it's kind of like a lab that we see in like the Emperor's New Groove, but they retrieve a book that looks like one from one of the more obscure Disney magic movies like The Black Cauldron. Magnifico opens it and they continue singing as they are cloaked in evil magic. The queen, who had her hair up and braided the entire time, lets it down into one long braid, referencing how Queen Elsa was originally supposed to be a villain. Meanwhile, back in the forest, Star is fascinated with all the little creatures and plants and starts making them talk. All of the animals are animals from previous Disney movies like Mr. Toad, Br'er Rabbit, Bambi, Bagheera. All the animal references from as many movies as possible come in here because it's not just for the references, it's because they're all going to sing something later. Star then turns all the trees and mushrooms sentient. This scene may seem pointless, but it's so that Asha and Star bond more and they become more familiar with these animals who are excited that they finally get to talk. One of the animals asks if they can make wishes on stars too, and then a bunch of them start clamoring for wishes, and even a small elephant will come up and be like, can I wish to fly? And stars like, sure, if you wish hard enough. And then all the animals start to sing about what they want to wish for. This is like you're a star, but better written. Maybe the three caballeros show up and start to play music. Oh gosh, that's an old reference. Mouse wants to become a detective, while another one wishes his friendship with his dog buddy never ends. They even start to reuse the animation dance that Disney is known for just as a small jab at the studio's old tactics. I think that would be a really cute homage. And then one of the mice shows up and shows a cleared out portion of the forest and says that he misses his home. All the animals then stop their selfish wishing and remember what's most important, and then ask for that wish to be granted first. We get this lesson about putting others' needs before your own, and then Asha realizes the sun is rising and she needs to get home. Star follows her and telling the animals that he'll see what he can do, but he needs to rest because like the stars in the sky, his power is strongest at night and he needs to rest for a bit during the day. We'll say a few days pass, and the cook friend goes to deliver a meal to Magnifico and sees him sacrificing a wish for power. She tells Asha, Asha, knowing the truth about the wishes, gathers her friends for revolution. They are all given Stardust by Star to be immune to Magnifico's persuasion, and they try to secretly recruit more people for the revolution, but people are so brainwashed by Magnifico's magic they don't believe them. Some of them do though, and we get a scene where everyone starts asking similar questions to Magnifico like they did in the original scene, and Dahlia and Bazima are the ones that are starting the interrogations, like in the original. And then we see another protest quashed by Magnifico and his persuasion magic, but this time, the friends see what's going on and are absolutely horrified. Shortly after this, Simon storms into Magnifico's castle, being a strong and well-built person, and starts demanding, give me my wish back. Magnifico, seeing that he got into the castle pretty easily through brute strength, is very, very impressed and offers him a deal, saying, Tell you what, kid, I'll give you your wish. I'll even grant it for you if you tell me who's planning to overthrow me. We don't see Simon's answer. Instead, we cut to the forest where Asha is recruiting the talking animals who are interested because they want to wish the forest better in exchange. Star agrees. Then we get the What We Know Now song and we get a couple of days of them preparing for the revolution and exchanging plans, bonding with each other, etc. And then Asha, Star, and Asha's friends, except for Simon because they can't find him, storm the castle and immediately counter the armed guards. Leading the armed guards is Simon, who wished to be the strongest knight in the kingdom. They fight for a bit, and then the talking animals come in and kick Simon's ass and clear away the rest of the guards. The animals also recruited some of the neighborhood pets that also want to talk after the revolution is over. So Star, Asha, and Dahlia all go up to the top of the tower to find Magnifico and his wife waiting for him. Magnifico and Starboy instantly start fighting in a Harry Potter-esque magic battle. Meanwhile, Dahlia and Asha fight the queen. After a little bit of fighting, Star gets severely injured and falls off the tower. Meanwhile, Asha is fighting the queen with her friend, and during the fight, Asha accidentally throws the queen off the tower into the ocean to her demise. Magnifico is severely devastated and severely injured or kills Dahlia in retaliation. While all of this is going on at the top of the tower, a crowd has gathered below watching the battle unfold through the mirrors. Star fell into the arms of Bazima who caught him. Asha's mother and her grandfather eventually come out to see what's going on as well. 
Star seems to be in very bad shape. He almost looks dead, so Bazima starts crying. The crowd, most of which have lost their wishes, feel a sense of hope and warmth as they get closer to Star, which gives them the desire to help. Bazima then looks at the injured Star and begins to sing a reprise of At All Costs. The rest begin to sing the song as well, putting their faith, trust, and pixie dust into him because they see he's fighting for their wishes. We see the glowy things on everyone's chest because everyone's made out of stardust, blah, blah, blah. This helps rejuvenate Starboy and he flies back up to fight. Meanwhile, Asha is knocked down and is getting wrecked by Magnifico's magic. He is very upset because his wife dead. Starboy then returns, but transforms into a wand and hands himself to Ashka and gives this I trust you to use me well kind of thing. And then Asha blasts Magnifico into oblivion, he turns to ash, the kingdom is saved, yay. And all the wishes are returned to those who lost them. There you go, there's your girl power, fixing girl own problems moment. You happy, Disney? But not all the people get their wishes back. Those who's had their wishes sacrificed do not get them back. But those people learn that just because one dream is shattered doesn't mean you have to stop dreaming. Asha's grandfather also gets his wish back and we see him playing music to inspire everybody to help clean up the town. The people of Rosas want to make Asha their new queen and Star their new king, but Star says that he has to go, and Asha's like, no, don't, and Star gives this explanation about how he has to grant other wishes. He says he also has to return to the sky to rest for a bit, as he just granted three major wishes at once. Asha then questions what the other wishes were. It is then revealed that Asha's father's wish was for Asha to grow up to be a kind, strong girl who helps everyone, and he made that wish before he died. Asha then asks about the third wish, and Vizima comes up and says that she wished for Asha to have magic powers so she can actually grant the wishes. Vizima says that she finally found what was missing in her life, and that was the ability to help others, so she used her wish in order to do that. Because she believes that Asha is the best person to help grant other people's wishes. Star then gives Asha some of his magic, and Asha gets a makeover for merchandising purposes, and is now dressed in blue and golden stars like the Sorcerer's Apprentice hat. Asha and Star get a tearful goodbye, and Star returns to the sky. The forest then gets another star girl that looks like the fairy godmother who helps with the forest. We also get a Simon forgiveness scene. Asha then starts granting the kingdom's wishes and everyone lives happily ever after the end. How do you think I did? I still had a checklist. I mean, I got the merchandising figure. I got the talking animal sidekick. I got no romance, girl power, the evil villains, everything Disney wanted, but hopefully better. Let me know how I did until then. Keep on studying.